one of the things we encourage news organizations to do is to continue to be transparent. And the reason why transparency is so important is because it allows to gain public trust. So when news organizations are transparent, when they're citing their sources, when they do make a mistake and they can be accountable to that mistake, it actually helps the public to be more trusting of news. And we know that journalism is so important. We know that local news is so important. So we want to continue to encourage these organizations, individual journalists and organizations in general, to be very careful and intentional about being transparent and um, being making sure that they're citing and being accountable if and when they do make a mistake, which we know that happens all the time. But it's really important to be able to gain public trust. So our message to journalists is to continue to do that. And we partner with journalists all the time so that educators can understand the standards of quality journalism. That when a journalism, or excuse me, when a news organization is publishing something, there is a whole process to that. It's not just someone blogging and, and throwing up something. But instead, it's there's research involved, there's data gathering, they're speaking to multiple sources to get the story. So the more journalists can continue to share their practice and their process with educators and with the general public, then I think that will encourage the public and encourage educators to really understand the journalism process. And the more we understand the process, we'll be able to tell what's news from other pieces of content and information, um, what's opinion, what's um, a biased piece and versus what's actually quality journalism from a trusted news organization. So at the News Literacy Project, we don't ever tell people how to or what to think, but rather how to look at content and think critically about what it is that you're reading, what it is that you're watching, what it is that you're viewing, because the media has kind of become an umbrella term, but news is a specific thing. It's a part of media, but there's so many other types of content. So we want people to be able to distinguish news from other forms of media, and then they can make decisions about how they want to view it, how they want to consume it, what they want to believe and take away from those messages. And so I think the onus is on both the journalists and the news organization, but also on us to continue to hold them accountable to continue to have trust in journalism because we need journalism. We need journalists to continue to do their jobs. And so I think there's this really beautiful marriage that can happen between the journalism industry and the education industry to better understand each other. And then I think that will lead to a more informed citizenry all across the board, ranging from students to the broader public in general. I think one of the first things is to realize that there is an incredibly overwhelming amount of content that exists. So it's really hard to sift through our timelines and know what's credible and what isn't credible. And so I think in order to encourage more people to consume news, to be interested in the news, what have you, the news has done, I think, a good job of being where people are. You can find news on social media. There's digital news as well as print news. There's a lot of ways to access the news. And I think the more we promote those resources, the more we share those resources, the more we share actual articles and not just quotes from articles, I think this will help um, to aid in that work. Um, one of the things I think is really interesting and really cool is that a lot of social media platforms now will ask you before you share an article, hey, did you click the link and read it? And that way, people are encouraged to actually read the content that they're sharing, to actually open the news article and read the whole thing or watch the whole thing to make sure that you actually agree with what they're saying and that you want to share with what they're, what they're saying because it's based on credibility. And so the more we teach people news literacy skills, I think people will naturally consume more news. One, because they'd be more interested. And two, I think they'd have a, a vested understanding that this impacts our daily lives. Communities are impacted so much by the news, by um, public opinion. And I think the more we share that understanding with consumers, students and the broader public alike, that the news isn't random. It's a 
way to understand the world around you, to connect with what's happening, how decisions are being made, who's making them and how they're impacting you. The more we teach students that, then you'll just have a natural interest in the news and a natural understanding so we use news in our Checkology curriculum all the time. We use real articles in our newsletters all the time so that students will know the things that they're seeing, some of the images on social media that are floating around, they're picked from somewhere, they're not random, and sometimes they're manipulated, and sometimes they're um, twisted to mean something else, but go back to the original source, the actual news. And I think the last important piece of this is for us to continue to teach folks what's the difference between news and other types of content so there's nothing wrong with reading anything you'd like to read but that doesn't make it news so as much as we can encourage people to understand what the news is and what the journalistic process is then i think folks will naturally have an interest in the news because they'll be curious about what's going on around them and how they can get involved in things that are happening in their community and things that are impacting them every day. By the time you graduate or by the time you finish school, whenever that is, you will be ready for to participate in civic life. Educators are on the front lines in the fight against misinformation. They see it every day. They watch their students um, come to class with ideas that they may have gotten from social media or elsewhere. So we believe that the solution to this problem starts in education, starts with educators. They're so important. And we want to make sure that educators know they are central to this work continuing, um, that they are really the champions for news and media literacy in their classrooms um, because they're on the front lines of this issue. And that's an incredibly critical role that they play. And so we want to, one, make sure that educators understand the importance of their role, and then our strategy is to equip them with the tools and the skills that they need to be able to teach these practices and strategies to their students. So at the News Literacy Project, we host free professional development trainings for educators throughout the year. And what we do in these trainings is we let educators come and register and they learn the entire misinformation landscape. We give them the strategies of how to take this learning and put it into practice in their classrooms. We give them examples of what other educators are doing and how they may want to incorporate these skills into their practice. So we're not expecting educators to do it alone, but we come alongside them and we offer support and we offer our expertise in this field that we've been working in as an organization for over 15 years. And we just want to make sure that they know you're not alone and we have resources and support and expertise to make sure you, know, you are well equipped in your classroom to teach these skills and these strategies to the next generation of students. And so professional development is one aspect of our work. Another aspect of our work is partnerships. We um, have partnerships with districts, with schools, and then even at the state levels where we wanna work directly with those who are in charge of the school systems and say, hey, we introduce our, our work, ourselves, what it is that we offer, and we talk about how to create an action plan that is sustainable and that makes sense for that particular school or district. Um, in the US, every state has a different set of rules. So we wanna make sure that we're working directly with those who are in charge to create something that works for that state. So they can use our materials, which stay the same, but we wanna figure out a way for them to use them in their context. Sometimes this looks like um, creating uh, just a unit of instruction so that within whatever discipline an educator is teaching, they can incorporate our Checkology virtual classroom, for example, into their practice. And our Checkology virtual classroom is another strategy. It's a free online platform that contains 19 lessons to help teach news literacy. So educators don't even have to come up with the content. We have the curriculum, we have the training, and we're just giving you the tools and saying, hey, we hope that you can teach this. We encourage you to teach this. And we want to make sure you have everything that you need to be able to do it. 
And so our, our strategy is really, our, our vision is to see news literacy embedded into the American education experience. And our strategy and vehicle for doing that is to create a national movement where we can see systemic media literacy education happening in states all across the country. Oh,